Hello, 8th graders. This video is all about Newton's second law. In this video, we're going to talk about the final one out of the three that we've talked about in this class, and it has everything to do with acceleration. Now, we've already done a lesson on acceleration, and you learned that acceleration is how much the velocity changes over time. But what if you don't know anything about the velocity? That's where Newton's second law comes in. Imagine you've got these two wagons, and one of them has a really big mass, and the other has a really small mass. As long as you can figure out how hard you're pulling on them, and you can also tell how fast they're accelerating, you're going to be able to figure out what those masses actually are using Newton's second law. It's all about the relationship between those three variables. So Newton's second law basically says, if you pull on two objects with the exact same force, but those two objects have different masses, well, the larger one is going to accelerate less. And this is something that hopefully feels pretty intuitive. We just did a lab with the little carts and the weights, and when you put more mass in the cart and you didn't pull on it very hard, it sped up really slow. But Newton's second law allows us to actually calculate it. Since Newton's second law has to do with forces, we need to bring back free body diagrams. So in a free body diagram, you might have a whole bunch of different forces acting on an object, but the net force is going to tell us which force like wins or what's left over. So just to kind of remind you, Balanced forces are things that don't have any acceleration. And hopefully as you're thinking about Newton's second law, that's starting to be a little more clear. In this picture, we have five Newtons on either side and then two Newtons on either side. This box is not going to have any net force. The net force is zero. And if there is no net force, it's not going to start speeding up, no matter how heavy the box is. So this object is going to continue doing whatever it was already doing, at rest or in motion. It's just going to keep doing whatever it was doing. And that's basically what Newton's first law said. Now we're dealing with boxes that are unbalanced. So this one now is unbalanced to the right because the 5 is bigger than the 3. So the net force on this one is going to be 2 Newtons. Well, Newton's second law is going to help us to figure out how much this box is going to accelerate. So to say this another way, things that are balanced are not going to accelerate. And that's where Newton's first law comes in. They're just going to keep doing whatever they were doing. Newton's second law tells us what's going to happen when things aren't balanced. How much are they going to accelerate? The equation is pretty simple. It looks just like what's on your screen. On your paper, I'm going to need you to label a couple of things and make sure that you've got the units down. We're also going to be using a triangle, just like we did before, so that we can fall, solve for any part of this equation that we want. The mass and the acceleration we've used before. So most of the time mass is going to be in kilograms and our acceleration is going to be in meters per second per second, just like in the last video about acceleration. Newtons, of course, are what we're going to be using for force, just like when we've done free body diagrams in the past. Remember, net force is when you add and subtract all the arrows and it's what's left over. If you need to leave yourself a little reminder, on your notes is a good place to do that. So let's do one example, a couple of example problems together. Let's go back to that box that had five newtons on this side and three on the other side, and let's figure out how much it's going to accelerate. Let's say that this box has a mass of five kilograms. With that information, we can figure out how much it's going to speed up or accelerate. So now let's solve. We're of course going to start with our equation, net force equals mass times acceleration. Plugging in the things that we know, net force is when you take everything on one side and subtract everything on the other side, so we have five and three, and our mass is five kilograms. Simplifying this, it works out to 2 equals 5 times a. Now we have to divide both sides by 5. When we do that, we're going to get 0.4 meters per second per second. And remember, acceleration has a direction. Since the net force was to the right, the acceleration is going to be to the right. There are two more on the front side of your notes. I want you to pause this video and please try these two on your own. If you're still watching, you're ready to check your work for these two. For the one on the left, the man in the picture wants the mass to accelerate it by 2 meters per second per second, and we want to figure out how hard he has to push. In the picture, they're telling us that the mass is 400. So when we plug in the things that we know into the equation, we do 400 times the acceleration that he wants of 2, and we can figure out that he has to push with 800 newtons to the left. No small feat. Well, let's say that he's going to use the same force on this tinier boulder, which has a mass of 40 grams. And we want to figure out how much is this thing going to accelerate. This time we're solving for A. So we're going to do force divided by mass in this one in order to solve for our acceleration. Well, if he uses the same force 
on this 40 kilogram boulder, it's going to be 800 divided by 40, and we'll get 20 meters per second per second to the left. In these last two practice problems, this is where things start to get a little tricky if you're not being careful. If we use Newton's second law the right way, we can even find missing forces. Let's say that we know the man is pressing with 3,000 newtons, we know the mass of the boulder, and we know the acceleration, but there's also some friction working against him. If we know all these other pieces of information, we can use Newton's second law in order to solve for that missing force that's over here where friction is. In order to do that, we're going to set up our equation the exact same way. Net force equals mass times acceleration. The trick is to set up our net force correctly. Remember, net force is everything that goes one way minus everything that goes the other way. I'm going to take my 3,000 minus friction, my variable that I don't know, and then plug in my mass and my acceleration. So 3,000 minus x, I don't know what that friction is, equals the mass of the boulder, 400, times the acceleration that they gave us. Now we have an algebra problem that we can solve. When we simplify, we're going to get 3,000 minus x equals 2,000. We're going to need to subtract our 3,000 from both sides, and we'll get negative x equals negative 1,000. Remember, this, these negatives, if you divide everything on both sides by a negative 1, everything will turn positive. It's one of the rules in algebra. So x is 1,000 newtons, and this friction had to be pushing against him, so 1,000 newtons to the right, since he was pushing to the left. Now that you've seen that practice one, I want you to try this one on the last spot on your notes part. What if we know the acceleration and the known forces? What must the mass be? This time I'm giving you everything except for the missing mass. Please pause this video and try this one on your notes paper. If you're still watching, you're ready to check your answer. Like always, we're going to start with our equation. Net force equals mass times acceleration. Our net force is going to be the 1200 minus the 500. We don't know our mass, and it's going to be times the acceleration. When we clean that up, we'll get 700 equals 1.2m. Divide both sides by 1.2, and we get our mass of 583.33 kilograms. Please notice that mass is the only part of this equation that's not going to have a direction. Acceleration has a direction, and so do forces. The last step of this lesson is to try these practice problems. You're going to need to pause this video so that you can read the questions that are on your screen, and then you can check your answers in the PDF that I have attached in Google Classroom. Please pause the video now and give these a shot. You're going to take a picture of this and attach it when you're finished.